In this video, we're going to do two exam style questions looking at the constant acceleration equations. In the first, we're told a sports car is being driven along a straight test track. It passes the point O at time t equals zero, at which time it begins to decelerate uniformly. The car passes the points L and M at times t equals one and t equals four respectively. Given that OL is 54 meters and LM is 90 meters, in part A, we need to find the rate of deceleration of the car. This is simply a particle moving in a straight line. So if I draw that straight line, we can put three points on. If I want, I can put O here, I can put L here, and I can put M just here. So O, L, and then M. We've got 54 and we've got 90. I could consider now three different sections here. We're told that this now has uniform deceleration. So what I could look now at is the following. I could look at O to L, I could look at L to M, or I could look at O to M, as now the deceleration remains the same throughout. I'm going to put this information in a table, and I'm going to use SUVAT. So we're going to have three different columns, and it will look something like so. So on the left-hand side, we've got S, which is displacement. We've got U, which is the initial velocity, V, which is a final velocity, A, which is acceleration, and T, which is time. So I could have OL, I could have LM, or I could have OM. So we've got 54, we've got 90, therefore we've got 144. This now has a uniform deceleration, so I can put A right the way through. Remember, deceleration is just simply negative acceleration. We're told that it passes L after 1 second. We're told that it passes M after 4 seconds. Therefore, 1, 4, and we can put 4 in this column. We're starting at O with this column and this column, and despite not having the initial velocity, we can say they will be equal. So they will be U and U. I'm going to use S is equal to UT plus one half AT squared. So plugging in the values now, if we look first at O to L, what I'm going to have is 54 will be equal to now UT. Well, that's just going to be U plus now one half a t squared. t squared is one, so this is going to be plus one half a. This tells me the displacement is equal to the initial velocity multiplied by time plus one half of acceleration multiplied by time squared. I'm going to call that equation one. If we look at o to m, we're going to have now one four four. That's equal to u t. Well, that this time is going to be four u plus now one half a t squared. So if I square t, that's 16. Half of 16 is 8, so we can have plus 8a. In the exam, show your full workings that you're subbing this in. We'll say this is equation 2. So we've got simultaneous equations, and we, go, we can go ahead and solve either a or u. I'm going to multiply this one now by 4. So we've got now 216 is equal to 4u plus 2a. That's equation 1. Equation 2 remains the same. 144 is equal to 4u plus 8a. Remember, we're looking for a negative value of A as it's decelerating. So, subtracting downwards, that gives me 72. That's going to give me 0, and that's going to give me minus 6A. So, we can see dividing both sides by minus 6, that minus 12 is equal to A. So, the acceleration is minus 12 metres per second squared. Therefore, the deceleration is going to be positive 12 metres per second squared. And that has answered the first part. OK, the car subsequently comes to rest at n. We need to find the distance mn. So what we've got then is some point just here, and I'll put this on. So what I'm now going to look at is the journey from O to n. So let's look at that there, and I'll put that one on. If I can find this distance right here and subtract away om, which is 144, then I've got mn. So let's use some information again, and we'll collect that using SUVAT. So SUVAT. We know that the acceleration is minus 12. If this is going to come to rest, then I'm going to say the final velocity will be zero. We'll have a distance, which I'll define to be d. Now, this is d right here. Okay, d is the entire distance from O to n. What we need here is u, the initial velocity. Now, I can get that from these equations here. So if I just consider the equation one just here, I can plug in a is equal to minus 12. So 54 is equal to u plus now one half of a, which is minus 12. 
So 54 is equal to u minus 6. So u is equal to 60. So subbing that in, we got 60. So what I want to do is find d. For this particular case, I can use v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. So we've got now 0 will be equal to 60 squared plus now 2 minus 12 multiplied by d. If we rearrange, we can see now 24d will be equal to 60 squared. So d will be equal to 60 squared over 24. For a calculator with that, let's do that. 60 squared divided by 24, and that's going to give me now 150. So d is equal to 150 metres. So if we look at d, what we've got, d is the entire journey. So we want m to n. So all we have to do is subtract o to m. So we can say now that this is going to be 150 minus 144, which is going to be equal to 6 metres. Therefore, mn is 6 metres, and that's just the last part of the journey here. So all we've done is use SUVAT to find these missing values and sub them in. OK, let's look at another one. The points O, sorry, points A, O and B lie on a straight horizontal track as shown in figure 1. A is 20 metres from O and B is on the other side of O, a distance of x metres from O. At time t equals 0, the particle P starts from rest at O and moves towards B with uniform acceleration at 3 metres per second squared. At the same time, another particle Q, which is at point A, is moving with a velocity of 3 metres per second in the direction of O with uniform acceleration of 4 metres per second in the same direction. So 4 metres per second squared in the same direction. Given that the uh, that Q collides with P at B, find the value of X. So what we want then is to start this particle here and it will end up here and start this particle here and end up here at the same time. So let's collect some information again. So we're told now that P starts at rest from the origin and Q starts from A. So let's take now P just here. So collecting the information, we've got S, U, V, A and T. So we want them to be in the same place at the same time. Now, this is going to have travelled a distance of x metres. If we look at the information, we're told now that it has an initial velocity of zero as it starts from rest. It's now got a uniform acceleration of 3 metres per second squared, and it's going to be at b after t seconds. I've just given t because we want to set these equal. If we look at q, we've got s, u, v, a and t. So this time, if we look at the distance, it's going to be x plus 20. It needs to travel now this additional 20 metres to be in the same place. We're given the initial velocity is going to be 3. We've got an acceleration of 4. And again, t must be equal. These two things must be equal. And the point that they're at must be equal for them to collide. So we'll use, again, s is equal to ut plus 1 half at squared. So let's first consider p. So for P, we've got now S, which is going to be X, will be equal to UT, which will be 0, plus 1 half AT squared. So that's going to be plus now, and we don't need the plus because we've got nothing else. We're going to have 3 over 2T squared. So let's write that in, 3 over 2T squared. Do show your full workings in the exam. So that's P. Let's look at Q. Q for S is going to be X plus 20. So x plus 20 will be equal to ut. That's going to be 3t plus now 1 half at squared. So 1 half of a is 2, so that's going to be now plus 2t squared. So again, we've got simultaneous equations 1 and 2. We could solve for x or we could solve for t. Solving for t is going to be easier in this case. So what I'm going to do is simply now plug this in here. So if x is equal to 3 over 2t squared, we can say now 3 over 2t squared plus 20 will be equal to 3t plus now 2t squared. So subtracting now the 3 over 2t squared from both sides, 20 is equal to 3t plus now, and that's going to give me 1 half t squared. Multiplying by 2, we're going to have 40 is equal to 6t plus t squared. And I'm going to rearrange this quadratic equation to make now uh, perform uh, at squared plus bt plus c is equal to 0. 
So we've got t squared plus 6t minus 40 is equal to 0. This is going to factor. We're going to have t plus 10, and then we're going to have t minus 4. So t is either equal to negative 10, or t is equal to 4. T can't be equal to minus 10, as this is a time. So this isn't a valid solution. So T is equal to 4 gives us what we're looking for. So what we want to do is find the value of X, so we can simply sub it into here. So we can say that X will be equal to 3 over 2, and then we're going to take T, which is 4, and square it. So we've got X is equal to now 3 over 2, lots of 16. So that's going to give me X is 24, and that will be 24 metres. So the value of X is just 24, and we simply solve that using the constant acceleration equations. So there we go, two fairly similar exam style questions on a horizontal movement of a particle in a straight line.